Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. going ladies and gentlemen this is the truth seeker podcast i'm your host truth seeker excited delighted to be with you guys again for another episode of the podcast we're going to get into all things spiritual we're going to discuss the illuminati dark occult secrets that are uh at play uh behind the veil things you've never heard of before that affect the way that you think the way that you operate as a human being and you don't even know it so we're going to get into a little bit of that uh with my guest today jordan maxwell good friend of mine and excited again to, to speak with him and have him back on um i can't go any further without saying a huge thank you to all the patrons who are supporting my work via patreon um, everybody who has partnered with me uh, we are a listener supported show and could not do this without your help so again thank you from the bottom of my heart and i'm going to give a quick shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week we got two New people who have jumped on board with us. Shout out to Robbie Bowen. Shout out to Jeremy Smith. Thank you guys for coming on board. Believe in the in the work. If you would like to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. There you get access to my entire discography of work, which is 10 plus albums. You also get access to the School of the Mystics is something which we do every Thursday night. And uh, so if you're looking for community, looking for people who believe similar things and ideas and you want some people to roll this stuff off, many of you guys are out there by yourself. You're just watching YouTube documentaries and rolling this stuff off and you're going crazy. You need somebody to talk to. You've come to the right place. Our Discord chat is popping with a bunch of like-minded people. So if you're looking for people to uh, resonate with, make sure you check out what we're bringing to the table. And that's enough of that. We're going to jump right into this interview. I'm not going to hold him any longer. My good friend, Jordan Maxwell. Jordan, how are you doing, man? Uh, I think okay. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> good stuff. Always a controversial issue with you all the time. Every time you, you like to get the chat riled up, they everyone has something to say about it. And uh, it's always intriguing. You know, it's always a popular podcast when I have you on. And uh, you have a way of ruffling people people's feathers but it's a good thing right to kind of show you know what you really believe in and try it test it and see if there's any validity to it right well i mean i've always understood that when the student is ready the teacher will appear he's like here i am and so today <laughs> all over the world people are now in darkness they know they're in darkness they know that they don't understand how the world works they know that they're being lied to and deceived and that criminals are running the world, and the world is being run by criminals that are murderous, bloodletting criminals. And so people are waking up, and now they need a teacher. They need someone to help them to understand the world they live in. And so uh, in the Bible, the Apostle Paul says in the New Testament that we 
are, we have a war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the world rulers of darkness. That word world rulers of darkness is cosmocratoris. It's in a Greek word, which means world rulers of darkness, cosmocratoris. And it's interesting word because it implies that the darkness that the world is in is being ruled over by certain people. <clears throat> certain people are keeping us ignorant and ruling over us in darkness so that we are totally in the dark as to how the world works, what is going on and what's coming and what has happened in the past. We don't know. So we're all in the dark. If you're in the dark, that means you don't know what you're doing. You're bumping into walls. You're bumping into all kinds of stuff. You don't know what's going on. The Apostle Paul says we have a war not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of this world and the world rulers of darkness, the cosmocratoras. Does that word have to deal with the cosmos, obviously? That's right. That's right. World is cosmos and cratoras is rulers, world rulers. And its impl implication is world rulers of darkness, the people who are in power, who are lying to you. And that, my God, you don't have to go very far to figure that yeah. one out. Just listen to the world community of politicians and religious leaders that are lying through their teeth. They're making millions of dollars off of us because we're all hurting. And everyone's looking for, for some kind of a peace. And they're praying to God for peace. And the more they pray, the worse things get because we're praying to the wrong gods. And the whole idea is that uh, the more we change, the more we stay the same. People are the same today as they've always been for thousands of years, ignorant, ill-informed, unread, and not caring. And they don't realize that there's just a handful of people on the earth who know what's going on and who are causing the problems, and they are doing it purposely. And like Dick and like uh, George Carlin said, it's a big club, the people <laughs> who run this world. It's a big club and you ain't in it. You ain't in it. And so they want to make sure you stay ignorant and ill-informed and unread and stupid. So that's why they're dumbing the American people down. They're dumbing us down You're because they about... don't want you asking questions. They're tired of the poor, unwashed masses want mm. to ask questions of your superiors. They don't want you asking any questions. You just do what you're told to do and drink your beer and watch television and stay out of the way. And your masters will run the world for you. And you don't even begin to realize how much power you have as an individual. All you got to do is stand up and say, no, we're not going to buy it anymore. That's what I did a long time ago. I realized a long time ago how much people don't know. And I don't want to be a part of the world I live in. I want to, I want to know what's going on. I don't want to mm. believe anything. That's why you have so many churches. Churches are nothing more than corporations. They are business. That's why all churches are divided into denominations. <laughs> They're like 20s and 10s and 50s and 100s denominations. It's an, it's an extraordinary story about how we've been misled and deceived purposely by people who are in power today who don't want you to know. And I know I've, I've been doing that for years. I've been trying to educate people as to what's really going on. You're so talking about the, uh, the rulers of, of, the, of, 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 of the worlds, right? Of the world rulers and the world's rulers. And there's some scriptures that says that God or, what, or Yahweh, whoever created the world's plural. And you're talking about world rulers. Is this more than one of these different entities that could be that rule over different planetary systems or whatever at yes. war with one another? Yeah. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, in the King James Bible, in the very first words in Genesis it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But that's not exactly correct. Well, you know, that's not what the original says. It doesn't say that in the original scriptures. Because in Hebrew, which is actually a Phoenician language, a Phoenician Canaanite language, there is, in fact, no such a language as Hebrew. We say that, but, we, but what we're actually 
actually the case is that there is a Hebrew people and they speak uh, their own language, which is a Phoenician Canaanite language. And therefore, the people who are not Hebrew say that the language that the Hebrews are speaking is Hebrew. No, it's not Hebrew. They are Hebrew, but they're speaking Phoenician Canaanite. The same thing like in America. Today in America, we speak American. No, it's not American. You are American, but you're speaking mm -hmm. English. So yeah, there's a big difference there. So that's why today so many people misunderstand religion and theology and, and what's going on on the earth politically. And politically, you have to keep in mind, if you want to study how the polit political system works, it's referred to in colleges and universities as political science. It is a science. A science means you can prove it back and forth every time. It's always the same. It's a science to it. So politics is a science, a political science. There is a way that has been developed to control the human race thousands of years ago. It's been known by people who are ruthless, tyrannical, uh, you know, warlords. They know how to control the people. And today, it's a political science on how to lie to and control the world of mankind. And that's what we are involved in today. All of the lies and deceptions of religion, government, secret societies, criminal organizations, criminal societies. My God, the whole world is, in the, is living in darkness. It's just an incredible story. Does the name... Marjo Gortner ring a bell to you. I the Marjo, child, yeah, yeah, he the was child the, preacher from the seventies. Yeah, from the seventies. Yeah, he was he was phenomenal. <laughs> I remember watching that documentary on him. Yeah, where he was doing all the rant and raving out on the stage, and people were loving him and throwing him money and putting giving him money, and then he would go into the motel at night with his with his partners, and they would have big <laughs> suitcases full of money, dump it out in the bed, and they got plenty of money. Why? Because they're telling the people what they want to hear. Yeah, that's a secret that most people don't know. Mm -hmm. People today will always support what they want. Yes. They will not support what they don't want. You know, most people, not everybody, but most people will buy clothes that they want to wear. They won't pay money to buy clothes they don't want to wear. They will go to restaurants to order food they want to eat, not what they don't want to eat. Mm -hmm. People will not pay money to support anything they don't want. Yep. They will only support what they want. And so that's why there's so many different people in the world who want different things. That's why there's so many different clothing stores that have all kinds of clothes. Why? Because there's all kinds of people. And some people want this kind of clothes. Some people want that. So you have all kinds of clothes. But people who want to cho choose what they want to wear. Well, you have the same thing in restaurants. You get all kinds of foods and all <laughs> kinds of restaurants. But people who want different kinds of foods. So if you're going to cater to the public, you need to give the public what they want. And so in religion and theology, it's the same. Yeah. If you're going to run a church, it's a corporation, it's a company. So if you're going to be successful in the church, you give the people what they want. People want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear what they don't want to hear. Yeah. Very yeah. simple. And the one thing that history has taught us that people, generally speaking, do not want to hear, and that is the truth. They're not open to hear the truth. Yeah. There's, um, people want to hear what they want to hear, not what they don't want to hear. The one thing they don't want to hear is Jordan Maxwell telling them what they believe <laughs> to be true is not true. Man, Let me give you scary. an example. Let me give you a classic example. When I was like eight or nine years old, in Florida, where I grew up, I was growing up in the Catholic Church. My whole family were Catholic. And in the Catholic Church, when you get to be about nine or ten years old, there's something called a confirmation service that little children go to. And it's for children. It has to confirm that you are a Catholic. It's a confirmation service for children in the Catholic Church. And, and, and so we were told in the Catholic school the day before 
the nuns told us that tomorrow night at the church for you children, there's going to be a confirmation service, and the bishop will be here. Everybody in town will be here, will be here because the bishop is coming, and he will be here. And therefore, tomorrow night after the service is over and you're confirmed a Catholic, if the bishop asks you, he might want to ask you that if you have any questions, he will try and answer them. Maybe he won't, but he could ask you if you have any questions, you, he will try and answer them. Now, if the bishop does that, you remember, you don't have any questions. You keep your mouth shut. You don't know nothing. You don't ask nothing. You don't know nothing. But keep your mouth shut if he asks you. So the next night after the service was over, all the girls sat on one side of the church and all the boys sat on the other. And the bishop, when he was through and the service was over, he said, now that you are confirmed Catholic, I will, as your bishop, I will try and answer any questions that you might have about your religious beliefs. And so everyone knew, all the kids knew, you don't have any questions. So I stood up. I wanted to make sure that the nuns and everybody in the church, it was crowded. Make sure everybody knows who I am. I stood up so there's no misunderstanding. And I said, yes, Bishop, I have a question. I said, my father works with torches, like a welder. I said, and I played with torches. He's let me hold torches before. And I said, my question to you is, if I was holding a torch and it was on fire, and if an angel appeared to me, if an angel appeared to me, could I put hit him with the torch? Would it burn him? And would it hurt the angel if I hit him with the torch? And he said, no. And I said, why not? And he said, well, something to the effect that Fire is a natural phenomenon. You have to have a wood or plastic or, or paper or something that will burn because fire is a natural thing on the earth. And I said, I understand that, but can I burn an angel? He said, no, you can't burn an angel. I said, why not? He said, you can't even see an angel, much less burn an angel. And the reason is because angels are spirits and you can't burn a spirit. And I said, well, if you can't burn a spirit, no, you cannot burn a spirit. I said, well, then why am I concerned about going to hell when my spirit will burn forever if, I, if you can't burn a spirit? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why am I going to hell to burn when my spirit will burn forever if you can't burn a spirit? And so I realized then that adults do not know what's going on. Here is a man who's called a bishop and never thought about that. Most people <laughs> will wonder, what in the world is that question? They never heard of such a stupid yeah. question like that. And so it occurred to me that so many people do not know what's going on. They have done no research. They don't read anything. They don't question anything. And therefore, they don't know anything. And so I learned a long time ago, don't listen to what people are telling you. Do your own homework. Do your own thinking. I'm not, I don't consider myself to be one of the common people. I'm not common. I'm not a member of any community. You know, we have the gay community, <laughs> uh, the black community. Yeah. The word is community, communism. I'm not a communist. I'm not a Marxist-Leninist. This is what we got going in America today. We have a Marxist-Leninist communist philosophy in our government. The Democratic Party is nothing more than a communist operation in America because all communist countries, think about it, all communist countries going back to the 1950s, all communist countries are always referred to as the people's Democratic Republic. We have today the People's Democratic Republic of North Korea, the People's Democratic Republic of Cuba, the People's Democratic Republic of China, the People's Democratic Republic. And this is why America today is all over the world to spread democracy. Democracy is 47 white men hanging one black. That's democracy. The people have spoken, 47 to 1. So what you going to do about it? That's democracy. It's called corporate democracy. It's not a people's democracy like in ancient Greece. It's a corporate democracy. 
And so democracy is nothing more than communism, Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism. Democracy, to hell with democracy. I do my own thinking. I'm not a common man. I do uncommon things. I think for myself and I don't buy what the corporations are putting down. I don't buy into religions and cults and secret societies and government. I don't give a damn about your silly courts and all this so-called law. There is no law in America. There's only what a judge says it is. Yeah. There is nothing chiseled in stone called law in America. There is no law in America. In the Bible, it talks about in the book of Revelation, there will come a time when there will come something called the man of lawlessness. The man of lawlessness is a term used in the book of Revelation. A man of lawlessness. The implication is that there will be no law. And I used to think as when I was younger, what do you mean no law? My God, you go to a law library, you got nothing but thousands of books full of laws. We're the most law-abiding people on the earth. No matter what you do, you're breaking a law. And so we mean we're lawless. Now I understand. Now that I'm older, I understand the scripture that says that in the last days will come a man of lawlessness. We are a lawless country. We have no laws in America. And how to understand that correctly is that when you go into a court, the judge will explain to you, we don't care in this court what the law book says, so don't bring a law book into this court. The law is whatever I say it is. When I say something, that is the law. Whatever I decide, that's what the law is. It doesn't matter what the law written down is. There is no written law. We don't care about the written law. We decide whatever it is I want to do, whatever I say it is, that's what the law is. And so, you know, you can show me all the law books that say you are right, and I don't care. I'm sending you to prison anyway, because I don't like you. I don't like your looks. I'm going to teach you a lesson. There ain't no law. The law is what I say it is. Yeah. And so, therefore, the cop, when he stops you in the, when he stops you in the car, when he comes up to the car, you're not going to tell him about the law. He is the law. He's carrying a gun. You better wake up and find out he is the law. They can kill He's people got in the gun. streets and, and not even suffer consequences. That's it. And if you want to tell him, well, the law says, he don't care a damn what the law says. He's not here to uh, to officiate over the law. He's just going to throw you in jail. And you talk to the judge and tell him what the law is. Mm -hmm. So therefore, in America, you don't have a rule of law. You have a rule of criminals. The entire superstructure of Western Christian civilization is a criminal empire. All over the world, we are the law. Why? Because we got the guns and we're bigger than you. So when we decide we want to go into another country and do something, we're not asking you. We're telling you that's what we want. If you don't like it, then we'll send the Marines in and you'll wish to hell you'd have never been born. We'll kill all of you. We'll bomb your place out kill people across the board to teach you a lesson. We're not asking you for anything. We're telling you because there ain't no law. There is no international law that protects nations, that protects the people. Bottom line is there is no law. The law is what is said by the people in power. It's the golden rule. He who has the goal makes the rules. Makes the rules. Yep. Um, going back to, you know, the false prophet type deal and the people looking for, uh, you know, paying for what they want, spending money for on what they want. I remember when I was I found out about false prophets and then looking at some of the guys on TBN and the big money guys or whatever. And I'm studying false prophets and seeing what they teach versus what the Bible teaches. And I begin I begin to kind of like, you know, blog about them and put their st references in my songs about the false prophets leading people astray. And I was mad at those preachers. I was mad at Benny Hinn. I was mad at Creflo Dollar. I was mad at these guys. But then as you keep reading, the scriptures like tell you that it doesn't matter who's up there, that the people, like you said, the people will find someone to tell them what they want to hear. So the people are the ones paying those people, the pastors to be up there. They're, 
giving their money every week because they're telling them what they want to hear so that people will uh, seek them we out. We would say that they are being propagandized. We say that these preachers are propagandizing yeah. the people. But remember, propaganda does not deceive you. Propaganda helps you to deceive yourself. You are buying into it. You you look at these silly ass preachers <laughs> with their diamond rings and their effeminate haircuts and their jet planes and their seven million dollar mansions, and they're out there doing their tap dance on the stage and entertaining you with all kinds of silly ass bullshit that they call religion, and telling you what you want to hear so that they will make millions off of you. They're telling you what they what you want to hear, and they know it, and they they know. What they're doing is lying to you, and they know that. They figure you're so stupid. Why bother to tell you? Just tell them what they tell them. Tell the people what they want to hear in the church, and they will support you. And this way, you don't have to go to work. You can sit in your seven million dollar mansion and fly around the world and have your girlfriends and your boyfriends, and you don't have to. You know, you don't have to live like the common people. Mm -hmm. These people who are you know, preachers on television, they ought to be put into prison and beaten into prison. Yeah, and nothing more than a bunch of criminals and scavengers ripping the people off with lies and deception. It's an incredible story where theology comes from and what religion is really all about. Well, give us a little bit of info on the steeple that's in the church. I know you got some info on like the phallic worship and things like that, the steeple and even pulling in energy and things like that to kind of keep the people lulled. Do you have any info on that? Oh, heaven, yes. There's <laughs> so much out there, I don't even know where to start. Church well, even steeples, if you look up the word in the encyclopedia, church steeples. A steeple is a male erection. It's a, and that's what we call it. It's been erected. This church steeple was erected. The erected comes from the word erection. <laughs> and so a church steeple is a male erection. Okay. And therefore, uh, that's why in Washington, D.C., you have the Washington Monument, which is an obelisk, an Egyptian obelisk. Look it up in the dictionary. You'll see an Egyptian obelisk represented a male phallic as an erection. And the male phallic, which we call the Washington Monument, when it's in erection, is connecting to the female ovaries, or what we call the oval office. The oval office is the yep. female ovaries. And so the Washington Monument is the male erection connecting to the female oval office. <clears throat> Osiris? So modern-day religion, so much of modern-day religion Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all come from the same source. Most people do not know that because they don't study theology for 50 years. I'm just telling you what the truth is. I don't care how you accept it or don't accept it or don't understand it and don't want to hear it. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to tell you what the truth is about the time somebody told you the truth. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all three come from the same root. It's Hinduism. Go back to the Hindu religion in ancient India, and you will begin to see all the stories that are talked about in Judaism and in Christianity and Islam. All can be traced back in history to Hinduism. The Hindus came up with the idea of a messiah. The Egyptians picked it up from the Hindus, and they perfected the idea of a messiah. There is no such a thing as a messiah, and there is nobody coming back to save you. Nobody is coming back to save the world. Nobody's ever come back to save the world. And the reason why is because it's very, very difficult to make a big comeback when you've never been anywhere to start with. And so... You're not going to make a big comeback because you've never been anywhere to begin with. And so, therefore, Jesus is not coming back because he was never here to start with. It's a story. The Bible is called the, the, Holy, the Holy Bible is called the greatest story ever told. It's a story. It's an encoded metaphor. It's an encoded metaphor, symbolic story. 
that's telling you something very important right in front of you and you don't see it. <laughs> don't even it's know. It's a it. metaphor. Yeah. So what on the uh on the phallic symbol and stuff, staying on that a little bit, and I've heard you mention, you know, if you want to become a pastor, you want to become a missionary, you have to go to a certain school and it has to yeah. deal with, with, with that as well, right? That's right. If you want to be a minister in this world today, you better go to a university as called a seminary. Is there is there is there something in that we're missing? You're going to a seminary to become a minister. Why? Because the religion is all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's all about sex. Everything to do with religion is inculcated in the concept of sex. And we call Jesus the Messiah. He was anointed. And that's a term that's used in Christianity and in all the pagan religions was to be anointed. Well, anointing has to do with sex. The sex between male and female, the sex period, was referred to by the ancient world as anointing. And this is why today, even in England today, when the queen or king is, is uh, anointed to be king, it's a religious ceremony in the church. And the, the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the uh, English church, will take a silver spoon. That's because the royalty are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. <clears throat> and he, he will take a silver spoon into a bowl of oil, collect up the oil on the spoon, <clears throat> and pour it on the head of the woman. And after he's poured the head, poured the oil on her head, she is referred to as have been anointed by God to be the queen. That's the anointing is pouring the oil on her head. Why is it called anointing? I thought Jesus was anointed. I thought the Messiah is anointed. No, anointing was used by all the ancient rulers of the world. To become a king or ruler, you had to be anointed, pouring oil on your head. So therefore, when you say Jesus, the anointed, or Jesus was anointed, no, anointing means sex. Because in the ancient world, before males had sex, they would lubricate their, their male, their male <laughs> erection with oil. <laughs> yeah, and so that's why they were anointed. And so the kings would anoint all the young women of the, of the town. He was the big anointing. He was the anointed king pouring oil on the head of the penis <laughs> for sex. That's where it comes from. Yeah. It may sound silly, but that's exactly where yeah. it comes from. No, no, from. there's a lot, there's a lot of it. It's, uh, very <clears throat> so it has to do with sex anointing. <clears throat> uh, I want to let everybody know, if you guys want to call in and ask a question, I do see a lot of um, questions in the chat, but uh, I'm trying to do the, the call-in feature. Just call in, and uh, we'll put you through to Jordan Maxwell. We got him for a few minutes tonight, and uh, we'll try to take you on. And um, I just want to make sure it's working, too. So if you guys want to uh, jump on here, make sure you take advantage of that while we have him tonight. I um, wanted to ask you a little bit, too, about um, synchronicity. Have you ever have you had any increased synchronicities lately? I know a lot of people like when you're on that path, you start seeing the numbers, the signs, That's the phone right. calls lining up. Are you still seeing I am, numbers? I am and continually symbols? seeing. That's what I do. That's what that's what I call myself doing. It's called pattern recognition is what I do. I see the patterns of bullshit everywhere. I can see it. Well, I can see it in <laughs> see government. I can see it in religion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see yeah. it in government, religion, and all over the world. I see lies in government or the same kind of lies in religion, mm -hmm. the same kind of lies in education and law enforcement. It's all lies. It's all a bunch of lies. <clears throat> so, I, yeah, I do that. I do see a lot of synchronicity. And it's, it's strange how that happens. I do believe that there is a great spirit. I do believe in God, so to speak. But I, none, I understand what the word God means. God is simply the word dog spelled backwards. And this is why we have church dogma, because mm -hmm. it's the dog spelled backwards is God. <clears throat> and it's a fascinating world when you get into theology. 
because the very word for God in the ancient Greek world was the, T-H-E. The was a, a word for God. And so we, if you're going to study God, it's called theology. Ology is a study of something like bi biology, <clears throat> terminology. Ology means a study of. And therefore, theology is a study of God because God is T-H-E. Therefore, when I ask you, you say you're working for some man. I say I work for the federal government. I work for the president. Therefore, I work for the man. You're working for a man, the. You, know, you have a car. Yeah, I have a Maserati. I got the car. And so when we emphasize the word the, it has to do with the Greek understanding of God. It's the highest you can get is the. And so the is God. So the study of God is called theology. And therefore, in the ancient world, people in the ancient Greek world would go to an open air theater. And it was a place to learn about God in ancient Greek. And that's what we have today is a theater. It's called the God Show. People go to church. And it's a theater. Everybody pays and sits in a seat, and they're entertained with a movie. And they're entertained with something holy, and it makes them feel very holy. And it makes them feel that they've done something important. And so they're going to a theater to learn about theology, a God, never realizing that the church is nothing more than a corporation. Like I said, it's mm -hmm. divided into denominations. It's a business. And it's a business to just control you. It's a way of controlling the human mind. And I, I've, I've gone all through this for years. I've talked with all the experts over the years. And this is why I always try and say, at least on each radio show, I am not the world's foremost authority on anything. <clears throat> but... I'm a, I am just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. I'm fascinated with all the dark lies and deceptions of the world I live in. I want to know. I don't want to believe. I want to know for sure. I don't want to believe anything. The government doesn't want to believe. They have things called CIA, which is Central Intelligence Agency. They don't want to believe that you're all right. They want to damn well know. They're going to listen to your conversations. They're going to watch where you go, where you spend your money. And they have all these different social networks on the web so they can see what you look like. They can know where you live. They can hear what you're saying. So that if they want to get rid of you, they'll know exactly where you live. They'll know who your friends are. They'll know what you look like. They'll know your family. They'll know everything. Why? Because you told them. Yeah. Here I am. Here's what I believe. Well, you we tell don't them when like you go them. into the I'm store, when you go into the bathroom, they're tweeting about it, texting it. I'm That's it. right. You know, I'm on vacation with the family. You know, all of this kind of. They know that you're nobody's at your house. Those kind of things. That's right. That's exactly right. It's all to control you. They don't care about you. They don't give a damn about you. Government doesn't care about you. It's caring about the investment. This is why. If you're going to drive a car in California, you have to have you have to have uh, insurance, and you have to buckle yourself up. Why do you have to buckle up to drive a car? <clears throat> it has to do with commerce. Look up the word commerce. Commerce you think means business? No, commerce is if you look it up in a law dictionary. Commerce means sex. It's a commercial thing. It's buying as a it's a buy and seller's market. Commerce on the law book means sex. Look up the word Congress. Congress. We have a United States Congress. Look up that word in a law book. It will tell you Congress comes from a Latin word for sex. There's co-rest and there's Congress. Congress means sex. So therefore, you're doing business with sex. That's why if you're going to get married, you have to have a marriage license because it's a business. And if your business, thank God, it's none of my business. It's your business. But whatever, but whoever you're married, that's your business, none of my business. But the problem is that if you get married and it doesn't work out, you're not going to God. You're going to court. And you bring your house and your money and your car and everything else you think you own. 
because you're going to court, right? Why? Because it's a business. The whole mm -hmm. thing, that's why you have to have a license to do business. It's a business license. That's why you have to have a license to be a minister. It's just a business. You got to get a permit from the federal government to allow you to be a minister of the Lord. <clears throat> why? Because it's all based on government control. <clears throat> it's a big story. Have you, you know, um, days to explain. have you kept up with um, what recently happened to Alex Jones being uh, deplatformed and pulled from all the social media sites and every <coughs> everything yeah. pulled him? And just kind of wanted to, uh, you know, deplatform him. And they said it comes from the 1984 book. There was a there was a uh, a term that was used that pretty much just, uh, you know, e e erases that person's memory off the internet and all this kind of <coughs> stuff. Like, not yeah, it was called persona non grata. There it is. Persona non grata. I first heard about it in relation to the Soviet Union. When the government and the Soviet Union decided they don't like you anymore, you're not a good communist, you're thinking too much, you educate yourself and start thinking too much, and therefore you're no longer a member of the common people. You're starting to think like the leaders. You're starting to get in the way because you think too much and you talk too much, and you're causing the common people to start questioning things so they will put you to death. And the way they did it in the Soviet Union under communism, you became what they call persona non grata. Persona is your name that don't exist. You don't even exist anymore. Don't even bring his name up. That's the same thing in the Jewish religion. They, they, if you do something against the Jew, he will actually yeah. have a ceremony. And the ceremony is to, is to commemorate your death. <clears throat> There's an actual ceremony that Jews pre perform which celebrates your death, that you've died officially, and therefore you're through, you're out. You mess up one time in Judaism and you're out. And you're persona non grata. Your name don't even exist, don't even bring his name up. Mm. So if you need help, forget it. Ain't nobody around here knows who you are and they don't want to know. So go, you know, go off and die somewhere. They've kind of done that with the history books and stuff as well, right? And changing the history and, all oh, that never happened. This is what happened. Yeah, well, history is written by the victors. Whoever is the victor in, in any war will write the history, and they'll tell you what, from their viewpoint what happened. <laughs> yep. And they history. won't tell you what the real story mm -hmm. was. It's his story. <clears throat> whoever won, won the war. Yeah. Whoever owns the printing press. That's why we say history is his story. It's his story. Yep. <laughs> Whatever he said happened, that's what it was, because he was a victor. So it's his story, or what we call history. Mm -hmm. And you I gotta... like what Napoleon said, history are lies that we have all agreed upon. <laughs> a bunch of lies that we've all agreed upon, and so that's the history. That's good. It's not what happened, but that's the history that we've all agreed upon. Sounds good. We all agreed upon it. So we'll say that's what happened in history. <clears throat> we have a caller here from the 404 area code. I believe this is um, my friend Devin. For, caller from the 404, are you there? Hey, what's what's going on, man? Hey, Devin. Um, Devin called in the first time I interviewed you, Jordan, and it was back in 2012. So Devin is on that recording as well. Devin, welcome to the show, man. You got a question? Yeah, I, I, I do, ha I do have, um, I do have a, a, a question. I, w I was, I was one, I w for, for, first of all, hi, Mr. Maxwell. Hello there, Devin. Nice to talk to you. Oh, nice to talk, nice to talk to you as well. I had a, I had a question. I, I was, um, I was watching a, 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 a video on YouTube. I think it was yesterday. On uh, something, one of my uh, one of my YouTube subscribers had had did a video on, and uh, he he was he was talking about um, the, he was talking about the um, he was talking about the rings of Saturn disappearing, and 
the 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 second the second son ap- appearing and coming the the I I just wanted to know if you if you had any information on that. Yeah. Do, do you know anything about it? Yeah, Saturn was our original sun. The original sun in the ancient and prehistoric world was the planet Saturn. From what we can tell of the ancient world and the symbols and things that the ancient people wrote, they talked about the sun having rings, and they called him Saturn. Saturn was the name of the planet which they gave to a god. There was a god in in, in Rome called Saturn. And today, Saturn, the planet Saturn, is the god of the Jews. Today, the Jews worship the planet Saturn. So when you go to a synagogue, what you're doing is you're going to worship the planet Saturn. Most people don't know that. Most people don't know. Most Jews don't know that they are going to worship the planet Saturn. But it's all there. If you just do their homework, you'll find out that Saturn is the god of the Jews today. And we know that Saturn existed many, many, many thousands of years ago. But according to that knowledge that we have of the ancient and prehistoric world, the planet Saturn was much, much closer to us than it is today. The the solar system we have today is not the solar system we had 10,000 years ago or 12, 15, 20,000 years ago. It was different. Mars is not where it is today. Right. Jupiter is not where it is today. The sun is not where it is today. It was totally different. And so back at that time, many, many countless thousands of years ago, the planet Saturn was very close to us, extremely close, so that people living then would go out in the evening and they would see one half of the sky was the planet Saturn. That's how close Saturn was to us. It would dominate the sky. And with the sun hitting Saturn and, and reflecting off of Saturn, it would hit the Earth. And so we thought the sun was Saturn. We call it the black sun, the hidden sun. And today, the Saturn, the planet, is called the black sun. And the symbol for the planet Saturn is the color black. This is why judges wear black robes. Rabbis wear black robes. Catholic priests wear black robes. And the- and when you and graduate that, uh, from the, college, the symbol, the, the 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 symbol the symbol for the Nike sneaker, the the ring of Saturn is on it. I rem- I remember you taught me that. Yep, it's very interesting the way things are put and you know, put right in front of you, but you didn't see them. It never occurred to anyone right. to look at, to question why we have certain symbols and emblems. And if you go back to the old Phoenician Canaanite encyclopedias about the Phoenician Canaanite language, you will find that the planet Saturn was referred to as L, E-L. L was the planet Saturn. Go look it up in a dictionary. L was the god Saturn, with the god, and the, the Jews called him the Lord of the Rings. There you go. They still got Jews in Hollywood who are making movies ah. about the Lord of the Rings. So L is God in Hebrew today. L is God and L is Saturn. So when you hear the Jews talk about God, the word for God in Hebrew, in the in the Phoenician language, which we call Hebrew, the word for God is L. And L is Saturn. That's why the Jews on Saturday, Saturn's day, they go to Temp L. That's why you have a Temp L. They go right. to worship the planet Saturn in the Temp L. Temp L is the house of God, the house of L. L is Saturn. What about and the Kaaba? Here's, here's, here's another one. What about the Kaaba yeah, here's in Islam? A, here's Jordan? another one. They... Oh, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. The Kaaba in Islam, the, the black stone that's being worshipped, said to be even that's come right. from Saturn. Is that correct? That's that right. It supposedly came Saturn from well. out of space, mm-hmm. and they think it came from Saturn. And so that's why the Kaaba in Saudi Arabia is a square black building, because that is, a, that is the astronomical symbol for the occult world. In the occult world, the people who 
really know the subject of occultism, uh, Saturn is always pictured as a black square. And this is why today you have so many people building, uh, you know, public buildings which are black squares. The Kaaba is a black square. And the Islamic right. Islamic uh, followers, they march around the black square something like seven times. They, they circle, circle, uh, circle the black square. Why? Because we have rings around Saturn, and that's what the Islamic do. They ring around Saturn. <laughs> and they don't know that they're worshiping the planet Saturn, and nobody tells them, and so we let them do whatever they want to do. Let them worship whatever they want to and do whatever they want to because they don't know that ignorant, ill-informed, and unread, they don't know that Yahweh is the same as Allah. Allah, the God of Islam, is the same as the Jewish God, Yahweh. In Hebrew, it's Yahweh, and in, mm -hmm. and in Arabic, it's, it's Allah. And Allah and Yahweh is the same God. It's a moon God. So the Jews were moon worshipers. And that's why today right. is interesting. If you go on my website, go to jordanmaxwellshow.com. My website, you're hearing my voice saying it. So don't ask me, is this really your website? You're hearing me saying it. My website is... Oh, I've, 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 been on your, I've been on your website before. I'm familiar with it. Jordan Maxwell Show. Dot com is my website. Right. Nothing else. Anything else is not my website. JordanMaxwellShow.com. If you go on JordanMaxwellShow.com, you will see a little banner that says Jordan Maxwell Research Society. You click on that and you can join. You can join my research society in which I have all the pictures, documents, all the materials that I've been talking about for years. It's all on there. It's not all on there yet because I've got thousands of articles on videos and audio tracks and documents and white papers and research papers and all kinds of stuff and pictures galore showing you what is really going on. And there's only so many hours in a day that my webmaster can work on my website. So it's not everything is on there yet, yeah. but it's all going to be on there. Hopefully, if I stay alive long enough, I'm feeding him stuff all the time, and he's putting it up on my website. So if you want to follow my work and find out what's actually going on in the world and find out all the lies and deception you, you've been told, go on my website to Jordan Maxwell Show and join my research society. It's all right there on the front page. I'm a member oh, of it. A lot of good wait. stuff. A lot yep. of good stuff. Hey, thank you for the call, Devin. Um, Jordan, Christy wants to know, Christy folks in the chat, and she says she thought that Satan or Shaitan is where we get the understanding for Saturn. Is that is there any, any connection with Satan in Saturn? Uh, I think that there's in Protestant Christianity they have made a connection. I don't really think that Satan and Saturn have much to do with each other, mm -hmm. not really. But I think the church has propagated those ideas. You know, if you take the word evil and put a D, uh, as in David, put a D in front of the word evil becomes devil. Yeah, and take an O out of the word good. And the root word for good, take an O out of good, becomes God. God is good and the devil is evil. It's just words, terms and words. And so you need to understand that theology is a study of God. And when you find out what God means and where it came from and what the word church means, uh, people tell, talk about going to church and they talk about Jesus the Christ and have no idea in the world what Christ means. Have no idea in the world. You wouldn't use that word Christ if you knew what it meant. And you wouldn't use the word church if you actually knew what church meant, where it came from. Or amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, it's, no, yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting where these words have come from. Church comes from the Scottish, from the people of Scotland. If you're going to, if you're Sunday Sunday morning, if you're a Christian, you go to 
church, but it's in England. England is called church, but in Scotland, you don't go to church. You go to Kirk, K-I-R-K, or K-E-R-K. Kirk in Scottish is church in English. And so that's why you have a Captain Kirk on Star Trek. Captain Kirk is Captain Church. He's the captain of the church. Kirk is church in Scottish. And therefore, the church has taken you where no man has gone before. That's right. They've been taking you for a long time, and you're still taking you. And so when you begin to see where the word Kirk comes from, it goes back to the, the time of the uh, Crusades back in the 13th century when the Catholic Church and the Pope sent out what we call the Crusades. The Crusaders were the Knights Templars. And they went into Jerusalem to kick out the Islamic world and take over Jerusalem for Rome. And so the Knights Templars, who were the soldiers that the Pope sent in, the, the, the Knights Templars soldiers learned a lot out of, out of the Middle East. They learned a lot about how the Middle Eastern people eat, what they eat, what they wear, what their thoughts are, how they believe what they believe, how they war, how they do fighting. So the Knights Templars or the, or the armies that the Pope sent in to kick the Islamic out, the Knights Templars learned a lot about the Middle East. So when they came back to Rome, they brought back with them all kinds of ideas and spices and drinks and concepts and ideas and one of the most important ideas that the, the military brought back to Rome was the story of a goddess. Her name was Circe. Circe was a goddess in the ancient prehistoric world, the ancient world in the Middle East. Circe was a goddess. It goes back to the ancient Greek goddess, Circe. And Circe was a goddess who was able to, according to the story of, of the ancient Greek goddess, Circe, that was that was believed in in the Middle East. They got it from Greece. Circe was able to be called, she was a goddess, so she was a mother. She was called Mother Circe, Mother Goddess. And so Circe in the Middle East becomes Kirk in Scotland, becomes Church in England. So we have Mother Church, no, it's Mother Kirk, it's Mother Circe. Circe gives us our word circle. And so it was a three-ring circus, <laughs> Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the three rings. And so Circe was able, according to the ancient people, Circe in mythology was able to hypnotize people. She would hypnotize them with magical spells and bring the people into her home. And when the people came in, she would lock the door behind them. And then she would magically take away their minds, take their minds from them. So they would be mindless. And then she would feed off of them. She would eat them. She would make them into animals and make them, and then she would eat them. And she would feed off of the people that she brought in with magic. Well, that's exactly what the Mother Church has done. She's fed off of the people. She brings people in with magical spells and all mm -hmm. these wonderful, wonderful stories and all the candle lights and the, the chanting sounds very holy. And the people come into the church into the theater and they are sucked into and they fell for the story and now they are feeding mother church mother cersei they are mm -hmm. sending money to mother cersei giving her you know willing now the houses they, they give their cars their houses their money to the church so she's feeding off of the people mother cersei mother kirk or mother church so if you're going to church, just remember it's the worship of a goddess called Circe, Mother Circe, Mother Church, Mother Earth. Now, what, what about what about those um, who would who would either believe this or teach this, but they do it openly versus hiding it or shrouding it with, "Hey, you can worship Jesus, but really we're worshiping these Babylonian gods through the same." you know the same yeah. rituals just different names what about the ones who are like okay we understand this is how energy works we understand how this system works we're not going to hide it but there's a lot of people embracing some of the mysticism of music and sound and and some of the stuff the ancients had like they understood 
how the gods work. They understood the alignments of, of the planets and they built their churches and monuments and structures to channel that energy. And for them, there, there was no hiding it. It was up there for the people until the dogma and all the other stuff came. So what about people who, um, who are trying to figure out how this, the music works and, and try to use it for their own good and their own, you know, I guess, you know what I'm saying, spirituality? What about that? Well, that's, that's what the Bible says in Jeremiah 6, 16. God says to the people in the book of Jeremiah, in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 6, 16, God says to go out, go out, you people, and look up into the heavens and go back. You've taken a wrong turn, he said to the people. You've taken a wrong turn. You're wrong. Go back to the old way. <laughs> the old way is where the real truth is, yeah. is in the old way. Yeah. And so the people were told by God, go back to the old way. Look it up in, Gen in uh, yeah. Jeremiah 6, 16. What it do you mean that, old way? There you'll find rest. That's right. There you'll find rest and you'll get what you're looking for if you go back to the old way. Well, that's important because the very word Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the light. I am the way. But what you don't know is if you go to encyclopedias on religion and do the research, you will find that in the ancient world, the zodiac was called the way because it was the sun went on its way and it went through the 12 signs of the zodiac. So the sun was on his way. And so the zodiac became known the as way. the way. And therefore, original Christians were worshiping the Zodiac. And so they yeah. were called people of the way. Yep. And Jesus said, I am the way. Well, Jesus yep. is God's son, S-U-N, not S-O-N. And Jesus had 12 apostles or 12 mm -hmm. followers. Just like Joseph had 12 brothers and 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 is the 12 signs of the Zodiac, the 12 months of the year. And so Jesus is going through the 12 signs as 12 apostles, 12 followers. And so Jesus represents, he said, I am the way and the light. Well, that's what the sun is, the way and the light. Mm -hmm. The zodiac is the way. Go. So God says, go back to the old way. The Milky and Way. the old way is the zodiac. You got the Milky Way. If you way, understand, so, what yeah. word, uh, understand what the word is, God's kingdom. We hear all about God's kingdom. Nobody has up to now ever figured out God's kingdom is so obvious that nobody saw it. It's been, it's been around for thousands of years, God's kingdom. We humans put other life forms on the earth into particular brackets. We call birds or in blocks, fish or in schools, uh, cows are in, uh, are in, in herds. You know, yeah. Um, what's the word? The idea is we put animals into different for an animal, and the ancient Greek was zodio, was a zoo. This is why we have today animals in a zoo because zodiological is a word for animals, and animals are in a zoo. And so when you have a zoo full of animals, the animal kingdom, the zodiac comes from the word zoo, yep. zodiac, as the animal kingdom. And that's true because the animals are represented in the signs of the zodiac. And the zodiac, as I said, was always referred to by the ancient Romans as the way. The sun goes on his way. <laughs> and he's going through his way. And Jesus said, I am the way. And so... In Genesis 1.28, in Genesis, the first chapter was that God created the earth and he created the, the bright light for the day and the lesser light for the night and all the smaller lights uh, He for the night. And then it says in Genesis 1, and he created the stars also. That's interesting. Uh, he would say he created the lesser light for the night and not bright light for the day, which is the sun and the moon, and all the smaller lights for the night. And then it says, and he created the stars also. 
Well, I thought the smaller lights at night were the stars. No, no. Stars is something that the word stars in that ancient scriptures meant the astrological constellations were called the stars. And this is why the ancient world were able to navigate around the world. The seafaring ships of the mm -hmm. ancient world would be able to go all the way around the earth. Why? They're navigating by the stars. They could read the stars and know what direction they're going into. So the ancient world said, and this is in, in the Middle Ages, during the Middle Ages, in Christianity it said, that if you don't understand the stars, and the word star was A-S-T-A-R, Astar, is the way they spelled it back then in the Middle Ages. Today we drop the A and just say S-T-A-R. But the way it was spelled back in the earliest Middle Ages was A-S-T-A-R, Astar. And so the, the church basically said, if you don't understand your life in relation to the Astars, then your life is going to be a disaster. And this is a, where we get the word disaster, which mm -hmm. means a disaster. It's going to be because you don't know how to read the stars, your life is going to be a mess. You're going to really screw up your life if you don't understand the influence that the stars have on you. Your life will be a disaster. Mm -hmm. That's good. And so the kingdom of God is actually the zodiac is the kingdom of God. And it says, let the, let these let the light be for a sign, as in Genesis 1. And let the light, the stars, God created the stars and said, let them be for a sign. Look up the word in the encyclopedia for, and the Jewish encyclopedia for stars. Let the stars be for a sign. Look up the word sign. And it will tell you that word is O-T-H, auth which in Hebrew means the zodiac. So God is saying he created the stars. No, the stars are the zodiac constellation. Yeah. And then God said, let the stars be for a sign. Well, that's what we call the zodiac, the signs of the zodiac. And we're told in the last days we're going to see signs in the heavens. You can see signs in the heavens all the time. There's, uh, all 12 signs are in the heavens. Yeah. So signs in the heavens. And therefore, we're told in the book of Revelation that in the last days, there will come a terrible catastrophe on the earth and that there will be signs in the heavens. Well, of course, there are 12 signs in the heavens. And you've heard that song Christians have sung for hundreds of years, in my father's house are many mansions. That's a misunderstanding of the words. Go back and read the original, and what it says is, in my father's abode are many houses. Not my father's house are many mansions. No. Mansion is a word for a zodiological sign. It will call mansions. So when you hear a Christian singing, in my father's house are many mansions, no, it's incorrect. Yeah. It's correctly, it's in my father's abode, where does the Father abode? In the heavens. So in my Father's abode are many houses. Yeah, 12 of them, 12 houses of the Zodiac. So the Zodiac is the kingdom of God. And unless until you understand Astars, your life is going to be a dis -astar. You don't understand how the sun works. The moon, you don't understand the influence of the moon on the earth. The moon draws the oceans of the earth. Anything that's powerful enough to pull the Pacific Ocean to it has got to be powerful. Why? Because it affects water on the Earth. Well, you're 76% water. Does the moon affect you? On the new moon, we say that the full moon, you're a lunatic. You, you act crazy on a full moon. Why? Because the moon is pulling the water in your body. It's pulling you like the, like the ocean. So the bottom line is, I'm just giving you a heads up, that God's kingdom is the, uh, is the understanding of the zodiac and of the stars and the constellations. There were 12 sets of uh, stars called the 12 constellations, which is uh, today called the 12 apostles, the 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 tribes of Israel. There was no 12 tribes of Israel. 12 astrological signs. 
And this is why in the in the painting of the Last Supper, you have Jesus sitting in the middle, and he has six on one side and six on the other. In the in the painting by I think it was uh, uh, what was the painter? Uh, it wasn't Michelangelo, great, was it? The great inventor. What was his name? The inventor in the Middle Ages. Um, boy, my mind's getting old. I'm <laughs> getting old. I got too many things on my mind. But if you go back to the original picture of the twelve, da Vinci? Da Vinci? yeah, Da Vinci. Yeah. You go da back Vinci to code. the <laughs> the the uh, yeah, Da Vinci painted the the uh, the Last Supper. And you have Jesus in the middle, and six people on each, uh, six on each side of him, and the six on each side are divided into groups of threes. So the first group is three people sitting together. The second group of three people sitting together, Jesus, and another two sets of three people sitting together. Well, those three rec uh, represent the three months of the year. That's why you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. The 12 months of the winter, the 12 months of the year, is the 12 signs of the zodiac, of the 12 months. And Jesus dominates the 12 signs of the zodiac. So the bottom line on, if you want to understand theology and religion, you need to go to my website and go to jordanmaxwellshow.com and then join my messages of the world, the hidden world that we live in. What the words mean, what the symbols mean, what the law is, where the government comes from, what are banks, what is, you know, where, where is the world that we live in, where did it come from, where did all these ideas develop? Oh, that's the kind of thing I've been doing all my life. And I can sit here and talk for days about subjects most people have never heard about, have no idea exists, and most people are not interested. They're just not interested in, mm -hmm. the, in the occult world. I am. I want to know who the government really is. I want to know who's running the planet. I want to know. I want to know all my life. And that's why, when I was a kid, my dad would have friends coming over, and after dinner, we, uh, the, the kids would be told, go out and play ball, which was a translation. Uh, uh, you kids get out of here. We, we Adults want to talk about stuff, and you kids get out of here. Go out and play ball. I don't want to play ball. I told my dad, I'm not interested in playing ball. I'm a man. I want to hear what you are talking about. I want to hear what you guys are talking about when I'm out playing ball. I don't want to play a ball. I'm not a team player. I want to know what you're talking about. I know you want me out there so you. I don't hear. Well, I want to hear because I'm not mm -hmm. stupid. So I learned a long time ago that adults do not want you hearing what they're doing. They don't want the, and the guys that run the planet and run your country. They don't want you knowing what they're doing. Well, I want to know. And once I find out, I want to tell the rest of the world what's really happening in America. It's really a strange, this country, and who we are, and where we've been, and where we are now. And therefore, you now know where we're going. You know where we've come from, and you know where we are now. That's two point direction. And they, this is why, the, the, you know, when you walk into a church, they all have pointed arch doors and pointed arch windows the pointed arches of the female. And so you're going into mother church, you're going into your mother. And so that's why the church has windows with arches as a female. It has to do with symbolically sex mm -hmm. and drugs, money and music. Sex, drugs and rock and roll. That's what religion is all about, the, con the control of the human race. And people do not know anything about it. They love it. They love going to church. They love going to synagogue and never, really, never realizing why is it in Israel, synagogue is spelled S-I-N, while outside of Israel is spelled S-Y-N. There's a big difference between S-I-N and S-Y-N. And why uh, is it spelled differently? Because of Moses. Moses was a leader of a lunar cult. Moses was a moon worshiper. P 
people don't realize that Moses, there was no Moses. Moses was the name of a spirit that was leading the people of the ancient world into moon worship. The moon god was called Allah. And so today in Hebrew, so-called Hebrew language, God is Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, Yahweh. Yahweh is Allah. Yahweh and Allah is the moon god of the ancient Arabic moon god. I mean, I could sit here and talk for the next, yeah. the next eight yeah, hours. And we're starting to have of... we're starting to have some problems with the stream, so I don't want it to mess up on you. So we'll go That's ahead and start okay. it there. One thing, just touch on really quick, but you, as as you're mentioning the moon and mentioning Moses, a lot of the ancient or just older pictures of Moses, he had horns. What was that yeah. about? Moses always was pictured with horns. Yeah. It comes from and, the word and, halo, right? Oh, the word halo and horn is like interchangeable or something, right? Well, halo was something else. That has to do with Saturn. The, the moon that looks like a canoe with horns. <clears throat> Moses was a leader of a lunar cult. That's it. The leader well, of a moon cult, the worshipers of the moon. They followed Moses. Moses led the people in a moon cult. It's a big, big story. I'd love to sit here for hours and tell you, but I'm getting too tired. I hear you. Thank <laughs> you for hanging out with me, Jordan. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll have to do it again. And uh, uh, I appreciate everything that you you, you, you contribute to, to me and to everyone as well. I know they all feel the same. I'm reading a lot of comments here in the chat, and everybody is uh, really appreciative of the work that you have brought to the table, and you're continuing to fight the good fight and uh, keep bringing the information out. So, Thank you again, brother. We'll catch up off the stream. And thank you so much for hanging out with me for this little bit tonight, Let's man. do it. Let's do it. We can always do it again. It's up to you. You know where I am. Let me know if you want to do another show. We'll do it. We'll make it happen, brother. Thank you so much. You have a good night. You too. Good night. All right. Bye-bye. Jordan Maxwell, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with my stream cutting in and out on me, I don't know what the deal is with this stream. It's just uh, acting really weird. My internet's really good. Um... I don't know what's going on. Uh, YouTube has been really weird talking about uh, the Illuminati, which is in the title. There's a lot of <laughs> references to other phallic symbols and words used in and YouTube picks all that stuff up, man. And so uh, they, they're really picky about what goes forth. And so, man, it's really strange, man. I think we got some, I think we got uh, the good meat of the, the discussion though, but um, talking about the Zodiac going into that and then going into the Moses thing, which is very interesting. But I'll say, yeah, look that up. Look up, um, type in Moses and look up any old pictures, any ancient iconography of Moses. He has horns. It looks like the God Pan or something, right? What is that? The lunar cult. It's insane. Um, a lot of good stuff that was brought forth. A lot of, uh, a lot more uh, questions I had for him. Uh, we're talking about spiritual warfare and talking about uh, these the, the war of the worlds or whatever, or the, the people who are ruling over the world, fighting the principalities in high places, those type of things. Very interesting when we get into, I asked him before we went live about Space Force. I was asking him, has he covered that? He didn't even have an opinion. He was like, he is not concerned with politics and anything going on right now in pop media or government he's just he's concerned with the ancient world and he's very vocal about that so we didn't talk about space force but i asked him about it before we went live but talking about space force and talking about ufos and aliens and those type of things like uh who is it? Edgar Casey said that the Battle of Armageddon will be fought in outer space and then we got space force and then we're hearing about these different Jordan talking about these rulers and uh, th that uh, rule over darkness and we war against these principalities in heavenly places. Well, the heavens are, are is is above us when you look up, you're gazing into the heavens. So it gets really interesting. So, again, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Jordan, as everyone's saying in the chat, Jordan is a true OG. He really is, man. And uh, he needs he needs to get uh, all the credit that he deserves and. Um, you know, I definitely would not be doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for the likes of him. Um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to work with him on some things and, uh, you know, ho try, try to keep his spirits up, man. He's a, you know, I think he has a, a lot of information to share with people. And so if you're new to my podcast, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I've got several interviews with Jordan Maxwell. I'm sure we're going to do more. We got interviews with Santos Bonacci. 
um, man, you name it. They've been on the show probably. Like uh, Michael Heiser, we've talked about all this stuff. So there's a bunch of episodes in the past. Laura Eisenhower. I mean, just so many names. I could just go on and on and on about the different episodes that we have in the archive. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, hang out with us here. We go live every Tuesday and Thursday, and then we do impromptu episodes as well like this. And I've been doing a lot of impromptu episodes episodes as well. Um, have my Patreon. If you'd like to support, join the family. You can go over there and join for as little as a dollar a month. Anything that you're able to, to do will help keep this show on the air and uh, help us uh, keep moving forward in what we're trying to bring to the table. So with that, I um, welcome Carlos. You just subscribe. Just put out my new album entitled um, Colors. So that's available too on Patreon or on all the different uh podcasting um, well music platforms you can check it out there um also this thursday we're going to do a birthday stream thursday night eight o'clock central i'm doing a good do a special birthday stream the whole stream will look different uh we'll be taking donations and uh probably um you know taking a couple shots with you guys so if you guys want to have a couple drinks with me on my birthday i want to hang out with my stream and uh have a q and a Anything you guys want to ask, nothing is off limits. It's going to be very candid. We're going to open up. So that's going to be fun. I don't know how it's going to go. I may open the phone lines where you guys can call in, wish me happy birthday, all that good stuff. I'll be taking donations and all that stuff, trying to raise money for the stream for my birthday. And uh, it's going to be fun. So it's going to be an experiment too. So I'm looking forward to that. And with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. I love every single one of you guys. And uh, if you need anything, hit me up. Check me out at my website, truthsticker.com. If you would like to uh, book a private consultation, one-on-one -on -one session with me, you could do that now, available at my website, truthseeker.com. i got a lot of different stuff available that I'm uh, moving in that direction, helping people, con uh, consultations, counseling, uh, advice, all that kind of stuff, one-on-one. -on -one. So if you'd like to do that, truthseeker.com. Everything's in the description, Discord, memberships, all that stuff. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Thank you guys in the chat. Everybody hanging out with us. Grim sticks his head in here again. I seen you a while ago. I give a, I'm going to start just calling out some names real quick just because I love y'all. Allie Graham, <clears throat> Christy Lee, Grim, Christy Folks, uh, Stormy Days, Gio, uh, Danny Guerrero. What's up, my brother? Uh, let's see. Keep going through here. Catherine Marsh. How are you? It's been a while. Uh, Laney's World, Lane's World, Jay Pereira. Man, shout out to everybody hanging out with us here. John Santiago, my brother. So many people, so many people. And then so many new people, too. They see that name, Jordan Maxwell, and they uh, they, they click the link. So thank you guys for joining the stream. Like I said, click that uh, subscribe button, and uh, we'll take this relationship even further. Share secrets with, with one another. Brandon Higgins, love you, brother. Dumbledore, love you. You're a great, great man. Just reading the chat here. Love y'all. We're going to do it again Thursday night. Join. It's going to be one for the ages. Call your pastor. Brother Wayne might show up. We may do a prank call. I may call your mom. We may call your pastor. Whatever. I don't know. Thursday is going to be fun. It's my birthday, man. Let me do me. And I want to spend it with y'all. Peace and shalom. I love y'all. Good night. Your will is so much higher than mine. So much higher than mine. Your so much deeper than mine. So much deeper than mine. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.